Hello, Abby here from the Royal Armouries Education Team and today on our Home Learners Hub I'd like to talk with you about this Anglo-Saxon helmet. Now it's called the Pioneer Helmet and it can be found at the Royal Armouries Museum in Leeds. But what's really interesting about this helmet is the little bit on top. For you see, it's an animal. Now, do you think you can guess what kind of animal it might be? Well, together we are going to figure out what animal it is and why it's there by retelling the story of Beowulf. Have you ever heard of Beowulf before? Well, this animal is mentioned on armour throughout this Anglo-Saxon saga, so if we retell it, then perhaps we can get the answers we are looking for. But uh, first, I think I need to get myself into the Saxon spirit a little bit, so wait there, one moment. Ah yes, now we're in the Saxon swing of things. So I would like to first raise a Saxon toast to you. Wassail! It's polite to say wassail back when somebody says it to you. It's a little bit like saying cheers today, but it means be in good health. So are you ready? One more time. Wassail! Now, before we begin our story, I think we should raise a toast to some of the Anglo-Saxon gods and goddesses. Uh, in fact, we'll start with Woden. Have you heard of Woden before? You see, Woden was the All-Father, the god of wisdom, and he had some very strange pets, including horses with eight legs. Now, if you didn't think you'd heard of Woden before, I think I can change your mind. For you see, Woden has a day of the week named after him. Do you think you can guess which day of the week is Woden's day? Yes, Wednesday, absolutely. So uh, let's wassail to Woden. Wassail to Woden! Now, if we're going to toast to Woden, we should definitely toast to his wife, Fleeg. Now, Fleeg was the goddess of protection and of love. And so she also had strange pets, including a wild boar. Mm -hmm. She would ride into battle on the back of a huge, hairy, wild pig with tusks. A wild boar. Who would have guessed? But she also has a day of the week named after her. What day of the week do you think Frigg's day might be? It's Friday, absolutely. So let's raise a toast to her. Wassail to Frigg! Now the Anglo-Saxons wanted the support of their gods and goddesses, especially if they were going into battle. So they would often put their symbols on armour and on flags that they would wave as they marched into battle. Now our story begins with a warrior. A warrior king, in fact. King Hrothgar. Can you stand like a warrior king for me? Now, King Hrothgar, he was very, very rich. He got lots of money from all of his battles, but he simply wasn't happy. Cue a sad face, please. Now, King Hrothgar, all he wanted was to bring joy to his people. And so he had to think about what he could do. He stroked his noble chin and he scratched his royal head. Scratch your head, everyone. And he came up with an idea. Aha! He realised he could build a mead hall, a banqueting hall, a hall for feasting and parties. And so he got his finest stonemasons, his finest thatchers to build him this mead hall. And it was gold on the inside. Now it was built, it was finally time to put it to use. So King Hrothgar invited everybody in the kingdom for a good old party. There was lots of singing, There was lots of laughing. <laughs> okay. And there was, of course, lots of toasting. Wassail! 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 The sound of joy echoed around King Hrothgar's mead hall. It bounced off the walls and it burst through the great oak doors. 
and it travelled. The sound travelled across the fields, through the valleys, and down into the deep, dark moors, where it awoke something. Something terrible. Some call it a monster. Others call it a beast. But its name is Grendel. Shh, not too loud. Grendel. But you see, the sound of joy brought pain to this creature. And so Grendel made his way up through the moors to King Hrothgar's mead hall to put a stop to it. And that is the end of part one, I'm afraid. But I'll see you again soon to find out what happens next. In the meantime, why don't you draw the Grendel monster? What does he even look like? What kind of skin does he have? What kind of eyes? What kind of hands? Or are they claws? Please make sure you label your drawings as well. And please, please, please send some to me because I'd really love to see what you're creating. And I will see you again soon for part two.